Howdy folks, it's Mark from Nomad Boat Building. We are back working on the shear structure of the Catalina Wherry. Now just a quick recap of what the shear structure is. It's a bunch of components connected together around the shear to create a greater stiffness, to add structure to the shear. So that's made up of the breast hook, which we dealt with in the last video. It's made up of the quarter knees, and those two elements are connected together by the gunnels or the gunwales. Now, the gunnels are made up of multiple components. Primarily, it's the out whales or the rub rails, the in whales, and between those is the planking, obviously, but sometimes we add something called blocking. So the blocking does the job of widening out the gunnel structure so it's stiffer. In this particular case, uh, we're going to have blocking that's spaced out, so there's gaps between the blocks. That reduces weight a little bit and it allows for drainage if the boat's turned up onto its side. Now before we get onto the blocking, I've got a little bit of work to do on the inner whales, so we're going to start with that. All right, I've got my in whales all made up here. I've dressed them down, thickened them parallel, tapered them fore and aft in the vertical orientation. That's just for looks mostly, but it saves a little bit of weight. Now I'm just going to check exactly how much I need. There's some knotty stuff near the end of those in whales that are not so nice. So I'm just going to use this baton right here to sort of take a quick gander. Just bring it up against our knees back there. I'm just looking for a rough number for the moment. It comes out to here. And it looks like six inches makes it neat. So if I give it like seven or eight inches beyond the length of this stick, that is plenty to go into the steam box, so that's great. So over here I got some ugly stuff, some ugly naughty stuff. Leave a couple inches at the other end for checks or for snipe and I come down here. I think I can get away with just cutting it just short of the knotty stuff and that'll be good. Right there. At the other end. We'll lose an inch off the other end. That'll be perfect. Okay. At the other end, I'll mark out for my um, the bevel at the stem. And then when it comes in out of the steam box, we'll butt it up to that first, because that's the steepest part of the bend, and then bring it backwards. And this tail end can just spring high or spring low or whatever, and that'll work fine. All right, that's the plan. All right, so I've got a chamfering bit in here. Let's see what kind of cut we're getting. That seems about right. I often use a small chamfer on the bottom of longitudinals like in whales, thwart risers, out whales and such. I feel it softens the corner, it lightens up the rail a little bit without compromising strength and it adds a nice pleasing little shadow detail. When putting molding details on long skinny things, I'll often stack them together with the molded faces facing each other 
and then the router can bridge the two of them and it gives you a nice staple base and I'll just do it in short steps going down one side and up the other sometimes using climbing cuts as well in order to reduce tear out Now to make the blocking. Of course this is a great time to use up any small scraps that we had left over from other operations. I want to thank all my subscribers for their ongoing support, their comments, their shares, and good wishes. And I also want to thank all of my followers on Patreon whose monthly pledges support this channel. If you can help us on Patreon, I would really appreciate it. There are links in the corner or down in the description. Okay, with everything shimmed up the way I want it to be, I just kind of draw a line underneath my in whale here and just projecting straight across to the planking. So we're going to be putting blocking in here. And because my in whale is tapered end to end, the blocking needs to be a different size at each spot, which is kind of a stupid idea of my part, to be honest. Um, but I did it anyway. I made all my little blocking pieces oversized. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put them up against my pencil line here and uh, trim them off to height on the bandsaw. Just leave them rough, a little bit proud, glue them all in. And then later on after the in whales back on. I'm planning to just take the belt sander to the whole top here and just sort of level it all out all the way through the length of it. So they'll all get fared off that way. That's about the only quick and efficient way to do it. Okay, so that's done. And get this out of here. You always got to be careful when you're springing these things free that you don't just like pop all your clamps off and run away. Or else things tend to go flying. Oh, there's my little shim that needs to go on there somehow. And my breast hook. I don't need that in here, so I can take that out. All right. Um, so I came up with a simple little system where I'm going to uh, put some blocking on either side of the frames here. And just sandwich those in. Looks like I need to do a little bit of trimming for angle on these things. And then we'll leave a gap, leave roughly a four inch gap between them. So we're going to get there and there. Boom. Gap. Yeah. Mm. My little plan did not 
Worked well on my first bay, and not so good on the second ones. Let's see. This is where I'm not working smart again. to shift that so what'll it be three inch gap three and a quarter inch gap if my spacing was four my blocks were three spacing four block three Spacing four, that's better. Or you split the difference. What if... Uh, let's play around three and a half. But three and a half is the sweet spot. When Joe said he wanted blocked gunnels, my heart sank. I hate doing these. They are a pain in the butt from start to finish, even if you do them the easy way instead of the dumb hard way like I'm doing them right here. Uh, mostly it's because everything related to them is a pain. Painting them is a pain, gluing these little blocks in is a pain, and they're just sort of a weird throwback to uh, the idea of having uh, basically gunnels that jump over frames, right? I mean, when we think about uh, a canoe, for instance, where there's uh, frames all over the place, or any boat that's framed, traditionally framed, course when you put your in whales on top of those frames they create little spaces and when we started building strip built canoes and things like that and uh, plywood dinghies and we didn't need to have this framing in there all of a sudden people just started adding this blocking to recreate that look of a regular gunnel and I gotta say, there's, <laughs> there's just no good reason for it. Anyhow, I mean, yes, it creates a wider gunnel that is quite structural while not being very heavy, but that's about all it's got going for it. So what I'm doing here is I am um, installing blocking. I've got a line drawn on the inside here that is marking my depth. I'm using the blocks themselves to space out the space between them and I'm having to juggle that a little bit. Up here in this very first bay for instance I'm using four inch blocking all the way along with four inch gaps. Back there I have I switched to three and a half inch and in some cases it ha I have to sort of sh juggle them around until I get the spacing just right because it's not 100% consistent because these frames are consistent going this way but not necessarily following the shear. The, the, that dimension changes along the shape of the boat. So what I'm doing here is I am uh, marking the backs of my gunnels, marking my heights, marking where they land. This is number one. Okay, so I'm trimming these down on the bandsaw, marking their locations because they're all a little bit different from one to the next. Clamping them in place and I'm going to come back later on, uh, we'll just glue them all at once. And in cases where I'm coming up against frames, I'm happy to sort of tweak that angle a little bit and I'm doing that on my guillotine. Okay, two. Okay, so we're using shorter ones up against the frames. Put a smooth plane side down. Check my frame fit. Could use a tweak over to the guillotine. Better. Okay, that looks good. Clamp that in place for
And then we take one of our blocks here, space it, space it. Clamp it on. Clamp it on and then I check what my spacing is here. You can see that we've got a, uh, is that a four? wrong size. There we go. That's better. Helps to use the right size block. Mark it. Clamp it. And I check the one in between. If I see, so I got about a three eighths gap here. Okay, so I got to split the difference. So if I come over about a little bit that way, a little bit that way, and then I'm just visually checking it. And as I snug it closer to my finished mark, I'm being trying to get it closer to my height line so that I can mark that when I'm done. Now as I watch myself do this, I realize why didn't I grab myself a stick that's just a little shorter than my frame bay length, clamp it onto my reference line, and then drop the blocks on top of that for marking. All right. Mark this final position, number it. Final position, number it. Mark the height, good. And then that's done. I can go to the bandsaw, cut these, and put them back. I think I'm just gonna start stacking them down here on the, on the floor. I don't have any more of these uh, quick grip clamps to stack them all together like I did on the other side. So I'll just have to juggle these along. I got plenty of other clamps for the installation, but uh, they lack the convenience of the quick grips for this particular job. All right, now I didn't get any footage of gluing those blocks in, but man, there's not much to that. So we're gonna leave it there for this week. Now there's one more job I want to do before we finish assembling this gunnel structure. So we're going to take care of that in the next video. It's sort of a, a interesting, fun little detail that I do in a lot of my boats and I think you'll like it. So please join me again next time on Building the Catalina Wary. And if you like these videos and you would like to help support them, please consider joining me on Patreon. You can find links in the corner or down in the description. Okay folks, see you next time.